Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to um, use the Outsiders final essay outline that you were given today in class. You were given one that is meant to be handwritten, but I'm going to use this um, online one just to show you, because uh, I can type faster than I can write. So basically you're going to put your name, of course, and your period. So um, Your outline asks for the title. The title of the book is The Outsiders. The author is S.E. Hinton, and then it asks you for a plot summary. The key with the plot summary is to write something that really isn't very long that covers the entire plot of the book. Um, almost, well, think of it almost like the thing that you'd find on the back of a book, um, like the dust jacket, that summarizes the story. So let me give you some samples. Here's an example of a plot summary that's probably a little bit too short. Two gangs fight with each other in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Here's another plot summary that isn't quite right. Johnny and Ponyboy stab a Soch and then have to go on the run. They return and there's a rumble. Ponyboy makes up with his brother. Um, as a reader, I'm kind of wondering who all these people are. There's absolutely no context. Let me try one more. This one is a little bit more complete. Yours might be different from this one. The Outsiders is about the Greasers, a gang of poor rough kids in Tulsa, Oklahoma. They compete with the rival gang, the Soches, who are wealthy and seem to have all the breaks. The book is a first-person narrative told from the perspective of Ponyboy the youngest member of the Curtis family. Um, that would probably be as long as you would need. The thesis is what you are going to prove in this paper. Um, you know, you're going to have three paragraphs that support your thesis. So you have to think about, am I going to prove something that's big enough to be supported by three paragraphs? Um, you already did a planning sheet that talks about some of the key questions for the Outsiders final paper, and your thesis should relate to that planning sheet. Here are some example theses uh, if that's a word, that you could use for this. Here's a thesis you could use if you wanted to write about who is the biggest outsider. Um, and obviously you could do this for any character. Um, in the book there are many different characters who could be considered the biggest outsider, but I believe the biggest one is Ponyboy himself. You could use this one or you could use one in your own words. Let's say you couldn't decide on one biggest outsider um, you could write this one, this thesis instead. In the book, there are many different characters who would be considered the biggest outsider, um, including Ponyboy, Dally, and Cherry Valance. This would be a paper you could write if you wanted to talk about multiple characters. Um, here is a different thesis for one of the other questions that was in the planning sheet. Here's one you would write if you wanted to do, S.E. Hinton called her book The Outsiders, which should be capitalized, for several different reasons. Um, and then in your body paragraphs, you're actually going to explain these reasons. Or if you wanted to do the third topic about darkness to light, you might have a longer thesis statement, but still a pretty clear one. In the book, Pony Boy goes from the darkness of a movie theater into the light of the outside. This is a symbolic action which represents um, uh, several of Ponyboy's changes throughout the novel. Okay, that would be if you wanted to do the third one. Let's go back to this for a moment. Let's say this is the thesis I wanted to prove. In the book, there are many different characters who could be considered the biggest outsider, but I believe the biggest one is Pony himself. Once I've decided that I want to prove this one, I need to think of how would I support this with three different paragraphs. So I have to have three big reasons why he might be the biggest outsider. So the first thing I would do is I would write a list, possibly, of all the reasons I could think of and I'm going to write that list right here. So here's a list of all the things I came up with for how Ponyboy is different. Um, he likes poems. He's empathetic towards people he shouldn't like. Empathetic means caring towards others. He typically does well in school. He works hard on his final project for school. He doesn't believe in fighting. He reads a lot. He enjoys movies. He's a greaser, so he doesn't fit in with the social crowd. He's an orphan. He looks at sunsets. He's younger than most of the other characters in the book. He doesn't want to end up being a hood like Tim Shepard's gang in the Brumley Boys. So the first thing I would do is I'd say, well, are any of these kind of weak? Like, should I really get rid of any of them? Well, I should probably get rid of he's an orphan because his two brothers are orphans too. So that's not really a big deal. Um, 
I might even want to get rid of he's a greaser, so he doesn't fit in with the Soch crowd, because uh, half the characters in the book are greasers. Um, he's younger than most of the other characters in the book. Well, he's like Johnny. Johnny's young, um, and so is Curly Shepherd. There are younger characters in the book, so I don't know if this is it. All right, so I've gotten rid of some of my weaker ones. Then the next thing I would do, because I'm not going to write this many paragraphs, the next thing I should do is try to put these in buckets or into big groupings. So I noticed this one here, he likes poems, and um, I'll highlight it, uh, and he reads a lot, okay, and he enjoys movies and he looks at sunsets. So all of these seem related to me. Um, all of these I would call something like artistic. Artistic. He likes poems, he reads a lot, he enjoys movies, he looks at sunsets. So these could all go together. That's nice. I've got one bucket. So one of my, one of my paragraphs could be about being artistic. Um, another paragraph could be about um, he cares about his future. He seems a little bit more focused on his future than some of the other characters in the book. So let's see. Cares about future. And I'm going to put this in another bucket. So might as well label this one my blue bucket. Um, he does well in school. He works hard on his final project. Um, let's see. He doesn't want to be a hood. Um, how about the doesn't believe in fighting? Should I put that in future? I think so, because maybe that relates to him doesn't want to be a hood. Then I'm left with this one by, by itself, which is empathetic towards people he shouldn't like. Um, well, there's a lot of examples of this, actually. He cares about the girls in the theater when he first meets them. He uh, listens to Randy and talks to him. And even at the end of the book, he uh, laments or is sad about the death of Bob. These are all things that make him somewhat empathetic um, in a way that's unexpected. Um, in fact, I'm going to make empathy my big, my big bucket. Uh, and I'm going to label these a different color. So I've got my purple empathies. I've got my blue uh, thinking about the future. And I've got my yellow um, being somebody who's artistic. So that's my blues. Okay. Now, the one thing I would say is, what order should I put these buckets in? You know, if I think about this as my three body paragraphs, well, the first thing we learn about him is that he's kind of artistic. That really comes up right at the beginning of the book. But when we think about his future, this stuff really happens towards the very, very end of the book whereas the empathy comes before that when he really starts thinking about the girls in the theater and talks to Randy in the car. So it's always good to put your paragraphs in sort of a logical or chronological order. Um, so these are going to be my three paragraphs and I just sort of started thinking about my grouping. So in the book there are many different characters who could be considered the biggest outsider but I believe the biggest one is Pony Boy himself. So that means my body topic sentence for paragraph one is going to be something like this. Um, for starters, Ponyboy is the most artistic and sensitive member of his gang. All right, I'm going to have a lot of evidence for this. Um, empathy. Hmm. Another reason. Tony is different, is that he cares about people um, even when they aren't greasers. Okay. And then the third one is going to have something to do with caring about the future, but I'm not going to write that. So now let me show you, I'm not going to fill out body paragraph uh, two and body paragraph three, but I'll show you what I would do with body paragraph one. So for starters, Ponyboy is the most artistic and sensitive member of the gang. So the context is 
Uh, he likes to go to movies. He reads every book in the house. He talks about seeing sunsets um, and thinking about them. He, uh, let's see, what else do I say about him being artistic? Let's go back to my little list here. Um, oh, he recites poetry. He memorizes and recites poetry. Now I need to find a page number where I can exactly see this happening. So let me see if I can find one. Okay, so I've got body paragraph one done. I've got my topic centers, my topic sentence rather. For starters, Pony Boy is the most artistic and sensitive member of the gang. And I've got my context. Here's all the facts about it. And I've got um, my quote. And I could even talk about where this quote was said. Um, probably should put that in the context. The quote below was said to Johnny after Pony recited poem to him. And then the analysis is what this all means or why this is important. Um, the analysis uh, here, I would say, this um, shows that Pony doesn't really fit in with his own gang or even his brothers. Um, this shows that Pony doesn't really relate well to dairy um, and could be a reason why they don't get each other. Um, this shows why Pony feels connected to Cherry Balance. Okay, so this is what I'm going to use when I actually need to write my first paragraph. I'm going to use all this stuff from my outline. And I'm going to do one of these for each one of my body paragraphs. So my homework tonight is to make sure that I have my introduction, author, and plot summary, to make sure I've got a clear thesis. Um, you can do this if you want to, thinking about what the three paragraphs would be. That's what I did. And then I have, for my body paragraph one, I've got my topic sentence. I have more context and details. I've got an example that shows it, and finally I have analysis of why this is important or what's going on, or how I feel about it, okay? And then tomorrow, or, or on the block day, when I have all this done, I'm going to pull this all together into my final essay, okay?